Good afternoon, white-haired gardener here. Uh, Mrs. White-haired gardener, yay! Is going to be doing the Vanna thing for a little bit. Uh, we're in the middle of our bi-yearly um, dust bath area, refreshing slash rejuvenating. Um, being that we are in northeastern Tennessee, it really doesn't get a whole lot of permafrost. We do get some snow occasionally and this, that's, and the others, but it's not so bad. So the chickens take full advantage of having a dust bath area year round. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that first thing we're doing is getting the tarp out of the way. The tarp does two things. One, affords the birds some shade during the true heat of the day. And it also keeps the area fairly dry from rain, snow, this, that's, and the others from directly landing on the area and wetting it down. What we're going to be doing first is fluffing this dirt up. Those little boogers, I don't understand how a seven pound chicken and a few of its friends of about the same weight can compact that ground to the point to where it's almost like you've been parking pickup trucks on it. But we're gonna be doing a little bit of shoveling and this, that's, and the others. We'll come back to you as we get it moved along in, in stages. All right, look forward to chatting with you in a second. All right, well, we're back. I've already gone about using a, entrenching tool ask your husband if you don't know what one of those is an entrenching tool and have turned over that entire thing now my bride mrs long-haired white long-haired gardener i i get so confused doing this oh just don't judge me all right then very good she's using a tool we were loosely referred to as the twist and shout and uh it's actually for breaking up sod cluds and things of this nature um, hon, do me a favor, show, show them what this doodad looks like. Right. It is a true implement of destruction. If you want to break up your soil, soften it up nicely, um, use a shovel just to break it up, and then have at it with one of these. Now, right now, we've got to go over the entire bed, and then over there in the shade, unfortunately, you can't see it this time, I've got a 50-pound bag of play sand. We're going to be laying in play sand into this. Da -da -da. Uh, we're going to be laying play sand in and then turning that in. We'll be right back to you as soon as we get to that level. See you. All right. Well, we've done the twist and shout throughout the bed, and it is about as softened up as we're going to get. We already have the chickens doing the usual chicken thing. Hey, you need help with that freshly turned dirt. Let's see what's in there. So Miss White-Haired Gardener has just startled them all off, which is, which is an okay thing. It didn't need to be there. Anyway, we're in the midst of uh, taking this. Now, like I said, this is a 50-pound bag of play sand. The bed that you're looking at is three feet across the narrow and over six feet long in the length. Now, let's, let's be clear about something. Chickens are exceedingly social animals. It's very important for you to have at least a dust bath for your chickens. But the best thing you can do is give them a covered place for this to be several chickens at a time to get in there. They use this method for social interaction and also from their world, it's a way of protecting themselves against potential predators. Chickens being on the food chain, two or three of them in there can all be looking in different directions, making it to where it's easier for you to relax. And that's not something that you can think about readily, you know, as a farmer, but that's actually what's going on in the chicken's head. I need some place to, ah, oh, relax. Especially when you're prey. Yeah, I mean, when you're that low on the food chain, it's very important to have a few of your buddies all lounging at the same time and all looking in different directions, okay? Now, we do our fair share of trying to make sure that they're all kept safe and secure, but they still have, you know, several thousand years at least of built-in self-preservation. All right. We're on our way to getting done with that. We'll chat with you in just a few seconds. We've got one last thing to do. All right, now the play sand has been nicely mixed throughout the dirt that was there. Last but not least is we use an insect repellent type of product. It's referred to as diatomaceous earth. By the way, we use food grade diatomaceous earth? Good call. Unfortunately, my wife didn't have her mic on, so we have to start this over again. Dang. We're using food grade diatomaceous earth. Great. Anyway, there you go. Anyway, 
To make a long story short, we use no more than one cup of diatomaceous earth, which we fully intend to thoroughly agitate throughout this entire pile, all right? Bear in mind, you're looking at six feet by three feet worth of land, which is 18 square feet of earth. When we put this in here and then lightly agitate it in, your chances of it having any deleterious effects on the bird's respiratory condition is almost non-existent, okay? But it will infuse itself into the dirt, reducing pests, building up any possibility of existence in the dirt. And as they fluff themselves into it, they will wind up in it, putting on a light coating of diatomaceous earth in and amongst their feathers, which will keep down mites, nits, things of this nature that you'll have with your birds. All right, just a little FYI, let us get this knocked out and we'll be right back with you. Now, Vanna, as you can plainly see, no obvious white streaks or anything else. All of that diatomaceous earth has been turned in for the birds. In a few seconds now, I'll be pulling, I'll be pulling that tarp back over and tying it back into place. My bride will be uh, coming at with one last closing comment you should stick around for. It's very important. Chat with you soon. Morning. It's been a couple of days since the last video. We had a few technical difficulties, but the thing I really wanted to let you guys know is often people will use wood ash in their dust beds. We do not because wood ash and water make lye and that's very caustic to your chicken skin. We found that the sand, the dirt, um, diatomaceous earth works wonderfully and we don't need to do that. But if you have your um, dust baths in any area to get water and you're using wood ash, be very careful because lye is extremely caustic to a chicken skin. And if you notice all of a sudden little lesions, irritations on the chicken, it's probably because of that. You must be very careful when using wood ash. That's why we do not. Um, as always, like, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you soon.